Gut health is a rising star in the wellness world, and there's a secret killer of gut health that you may find as shocking and unsuspecting as I did. First, let's look at how the gut works and why it's so important. See, your gut has both good and bad bacteria. There's about 300 to 500 different species of bacteria in your gut microbiome. They're essential for overall health. They aid in things like digestion, they fight off pathogenic microorganisms, and they synthesize vitamins. A healthy gut has a diverse gut microbiome, which means you want many different bacteria species in your gut. Now, if you lose this diversity, say you have too much good bacteria or too much bad bacteria, it can lead to a condition called dysbiosis. Now, signs of dysbiosis are digestive disturbances, things like gas and bloating, abdominal cramping, diarrhea, constipation. You may also experience food sensitivities like food intolerances and even chronic bad breath. Now, some things that lead to an unhealthy gut and dysbiosis are excessive alcohol consumption, increased intake of sugar, increasing intake of protein, frequent use of antacids, exposure to pesticides, chronic stress, even poor dental hygiene and anxiety can lead to dysbiosis. And of course, there's a big one, antibiotics. They can wreak havoc on your gut health. Antibiotics are like napalm to your gut microbiome. And even if you haven't had surgery or hit up your local doctor for a Z-Pak lately, you're likely getting a dose of antibiotics every day. Now this is where things get interesting and a whole lot scary if you ask me. Now you've likely seen weeds in your grass uh, or weeds in your flower bed. Well, think about this. You can imagine the number of weeds a farmer gets on a 100,000 acre or million acre field. So the farmer would use a weed killer and the main ingredient is called glyphosate. At first glyphosate was used sparingly because if it got on the actual crop, it would kill them. But a company in 1996 genetically engineered a crop, it's a crop seed to resist weed killers, specifically to resist glyphosate. They call these genetically engineered crops Roundup Ready. Current Roundup Ready crops include soy, corn, canola, alfalfa, cotton, sorghum. Now with, with crops resistant to glyphosate, farmers can liberally, they just spray their fields with as much glyphosate and they don't have to worry about damaging the crop. But one issue the farmers are having is weeds are also becoming resistant to glyphosate. And to deal with it, they just spray more glyphosate all over the weeds and the crops. Now the use of glyphosate has been ever increasing. Check this out. Most farmers spray the fields a few weeks before planting, so the field is free of weeds before they actually plant. And then they may spray the crops after they reach maturity, which kills the weeds and makes it easier to harvest. But some farmers also use glyphosate to force their crops to ripen early. This is common for crops like wheat, barley, oats, and beans. This allows farmers to get a better harvest even in areas with a short growing season. Now globally, glyphosate has seen a rise in almost 15-fold since Roundup Ready genetically engineered glyphosate tolerant crops were introduced in 1996. So glyphosate is all over the fields and crops, but does it actually get in our food? Well. In two recent tests conducted by the EWG, 12 wheat-based products including five samples of dried pasta and seven samples of cereal were tested. Glyphosate was detected in all of the wheat-based foods. Pasta samples contain glyphosate at levels ranging from 60 to 150 parts per billion. Cereal samples had lower levels and they're not really sure why, but it was still present. Plus tests completed by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency found glyphosate contamination in 80 to 90 percent, 80 to 90 percent of popular wheat-based products such as pizza, crackers, and pasta. So yes, if you're eating foods that come from soy, corn, canola, alfalfa, cotton, sorghum, or wheat that are not certified organic, you're likely eating glyphosate. And corn, man, that seems like it's nearly in everything. But what is glyphosate actually doing to your gut health? Well, in 2010, the same company that created the genetically engineered seed to resist glyphosate was awarded a patent for glyphosate as an antibiotic. And as we said earlier, antibiotics are like napalm to your gut microbiome. They kill both good and bacteri bad bacteria in your gut. So how do you repair it? If you're eating these things, how do you repair your gut health? First, avoid non-organic foods that may contain glyphosate. You can eat different foods to help with microbiome diversity. You can eat fermented foods, you can take a prebiotic or a probiotic, and avoid taking antibiotics. If you do have to take an antibiotic, take them with a prebiotic or probiotic. 
Now, you can also check out cellsauce.com forward slash gut for one way to improve your gut health. And remember, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you know when the next video goes live. We'll see you on the next video. See you soon.